I hope you're all doing well today. This is Marcel Shane with Lady Creek Technical Services. Today I'm going to be reviewing some key points from our technical data sheet 174, factors that affect final cement grout color. This video will also touch on some factors that will affect the final appearance of epoxy grouts, ready to use grouts like our Spectralock 1, and even our caulks like Lattisil and so on. Before I get into the key components of this TDS, I'm sure you all remember this picture right here. The dress, right? This photograph became a viral sensation back in 2015, solely based on the debate on whether you saw the dress to be black and blue or white and gold. No matter what color you saw, blue and black personally, the phenomenon revealed differences in human color perception, which has since been a subject of ongoing scientific debate in the fields of neuroscience and vision science. No matter what the science or studies surrounding the blue dress have stated since this picture went viral, the most consistent explanation that the science community uses to explain this phenomenon is that of color constancy, which can most simply be explained by the fact that our brain figures out the color of things from discounting the color of the light source. Putting it simply, what we perceive as different colors are really different wavelengths of light between the range of about 390 to 700 nanometers. As you can see here in the picture of this flower, this is exactly the same flower, just photographed under different light sources. So although you're looking at the same object in this picture, you can see that different light sources make it look different four different ways. These light sources send different wavelengths, which can cause three types of photoreceptors inside your eye to send unique signals to your brain's visual cortex. Then that combines this information with other clues about your situation to produce an experience we call color. If this still doesn't make sense, check out this picture of this strawberry tart. The strawberries appear to be red, correct? Well, in fact, they are all gray. A Japanese psychologist created this illusion by swapping the red pixels for gray ones, which further reinforces my point that our brains have the final say on color. So you can imagine if you saw a picture of a stop sign grayed out as well, it also would probably appear to be red in your brain because that's what your brain has become used to. But how does this affect tile? Let's go a little bit farther. Here's a great example. This looks like a typical tile install, correct? If you scan the grid and try to view all the white dots, you'll see a bunch of black dots instead. Reason being, different neurons activate and become inhibited depending on where you look. Oddly enough, you can reduce this effect slightly by cocking your head at a 45 degree angle and eliminate it altogether by moving your face either very close or very far away from the image. So again, just trying to point out how your optics and your brain are closely connected. Here's another great example of how this phenomenon can transition into the tile world. If you look in this picture, you can see that the top tile looks gray, where the bottom one clearly looks white. But if you take your finger and put it in between the two tiles, they both change to the same color gray. The way this image was depicted, your brain sees the upper tile as being lit, while the bottom one appears to be shadowed. When you couple that with the contrast and shading between them, it scrambles how our brain interprets the image, thus making you think that the upper one is darker and the bottom one is lighter. In actuality, they're the exact same color. If you Photoshop these two tiles, take the actual color out of the middle of them, put them next to each other, they're both going to appear that same color of gray. So again, just trying to paint the picture for you that color is not final. It is directly related to our brain and our optical fields and can be different between all people. Again, referring back to the blue dress phenomenon that went viral on the internet. So keep this in mind anytime you have a tile install where you have a customer complaining that the color's not right, it doesn't match the grout sample, it doesn't match their tile, it doesn't look right in their countertop. There's a lot of other factors at play that could be and are leading to their color perception. So let's get into some more factors that affect final grout colors. Main one being is that these products are heavily made with natural resources. So the sands and cement and other ingredients in the products are naturally quarried and then put into these products for you to use. As you can imagine, natural resources are not going to appear or perform the same every time. Other factors that could affect final cement grout colors, a varying density of tile and stone can cause cement grouts to hydrate unevenly and can cause an inconsistent blotchy appearance upon drying. For example, a porous natural stone such as marble can draw moisture from the cement grout, where on the other hand, a dense stone such as granite can draw less moisture from the cement grout. And in some cases, the stone can even have different absorption rates within one module of stone. So in in some cases, the same batch of cement grout may potentially dry two different colors depending on the type of tile or stone around which it's installed due to these varying absorption rates. Same thing can be said about the type of substrate. If you're tiling over a substrate that's extremely dry, that dry substrate may suck the moisture out of the grout, which means that there'll be less water for the curing process of the grout, which in hand can create that grout to appear lighter than expected. To help combat these problems, we recommend using a calcium aluminate cement-based grout, something like our Permacolor Select, Permacolor Grout, or Permacolor Select NS if you need to not sand a grout. Overglazed tile edges is another one. The presence and amount of glazing on the two sides of the tile can also contribute to the appearance of the grout color variation. So you can imagine if the size of these tiles have a good amount of glaze on them, this will in hand not allow the grout to dry as quickly as it would with a porous tile, which will lead to that grout drying at a slower pace and can again have a profound effect on the cured grout color. Self-spacing tile lugs, this is a big one in the industry. A lot of 4x4s and subway tiles will have self-spacing lugs nowadays. These oftentimes, if not manufactured well, can cause the depth of the grout joint to differ from where there is no lugs. That different depth can cause a shadowing effect where the self-spacing lug is almost visible beneath the installed grout, which you can see here in this picture. Certainly the amount of water used in mixing. You can imagine if there's too much water used when mixing, that'll cause the grout to dry lighter than anticipated. Another potential side effect of using too much water when you mix your grout, or any Portland cement-based product for that matter, is the increased chance of efflorescence. For more information on this, 
certainly refer to our technical data sheet 159, efflorescence causes and prevention. The same could be said if you use excessive or varying amounts of water when you clean the grot as well. Same idea, if you use too much water during the cleanup process, this can not only wash out some of the colored pigments in the grout, which obviously will make it dry lighter than anticipated, but like we just talked about, this excess water can certainly lead to efflorescence issues. Job site conditions play a large part in final grout color. I'm sure you've all seen the jobs with the drywall dust, or you finish your work and walk out, protected with craft paper, come back the next day and it's all torn up. This is an inherent problem on large commercial jobs. Paint overspray, dirt from foot traffic, any of these common job site related conditions can typically adhere very well to the grout right after install, which naturally will affect the final grout color. So always make sure that your project's protected. Keep people out of that room until it's fully cured. Just make sure you do all you can to protect that install from being contaminated from other trades. A big one is the mortar being left too high in the joint. Oftentimes when setting the tile, you're going to be using a grape inset. And if you don't use the right trowel thickness, you could get some ooze or bleed up into the grout joints, leaving that fin set to be left high in the grout joint, which then when grouted over will allow that darker discoloration to appear into the final grout color. So as you can imagine, it's very important to ensure that any excess mortar is removed from the joint during the install. As we went over at the beginning of this video, lighting is certainly a huge factor in any tile install. As you can imagine from the examples I showed you, the effect of lighting on these types of installs can be profound. The angle of light, type of light, quality of light, source of light all play a key factor in how the grout will appear. It's not unusual for a grout to appear one color during the day and a different color at night. It's also not unusual for one batch of grout used on both the floor and wall to have a different color appearance based on the angle of the lighting that's hitting these surfaces. A big one on your end to make sure of as an installer is that you don't use different lot numbers. All of these colors are made in dye lots. So from lot to lot, these colors are not going to be the same. This is common even in high-end fashion. This is a known problem. You could have the sport coat or blazer be one shade of navy blue and get pants that are a different shade. It's just inherent to the fact that you're using two different dye lots. So if you are grouting a large area, make sure that all the bags are from the same lot. And if they're not, it's up to you to take those out and dry mix those before you use them to lessen the appearance of different grouts from batch to batch. The last thing you want to do is do a thousand square feet, get to a different lot halfway through, and not notice the color variation until it dries. Another big factor in final grout color is going to be variances in temperature or even weather conditions. If you're installing in the hot sun one day and then a shady area the next day, the varying curing times could have an effect on final grout color. Even high winds. If you're installing grout on a windy day outside, for example, that high wind can certainly affect the grout curing and in hand lead to a different color appearance. And then worth pointing out as well, especially with cement-based grouts, they're going to appear darker when they're wet. So even after a full cure, in the same way that a sidewalk appears darker in color when it rains, the same effect is going to happen on a grout. A lot of times we'll have customers install a grout, and then right away the customer's complaining that it's too dark. Just reassure them that it has to dry, it has to fully cure, and then that's going to be more indicative of the final grout color. Here's a great example of that. For the purpose of this video, from left to right, I laid out our Latticil, our Spectralock Pro Premium, and our Permacolor Select all in the same color. So you can see here, when wet, that cement grout on the right is extremely darker than the other two products. But in this photo here, when it's dried, you can see they're pretty close in color. But this picture is a great example that even though these products are the same color, you can see that there is slight variations, not only in the color, but also the ingredients in the products to make them. So Sterling Silver and Latticil will not appear exactly the same as Sterling Silver and Spectralock Pro Premium or Permacolor, for example. Also worth pointing out, don't ever rely on our grout swatches, chip clips, brochures, the website, basically anything manually generated to choose your final grout color. I purposely put the color swatches in these pictures. Reason being is that you can see that each color swatch on the packaging doesn't match each other and furthermore doesn't match the finished product in front of the boxes. These color selection tools are as accurate as the technology used can reproduce them to be, but should never be the final say when picking a grout color. So use these as tools to get close to the color that you want, but don't ever use them as the final decision maker. The only and best way that I suggest to make the final determination on the color that's going to be used on the project is to verify this with an actual test area before installing. And only do this when the final lighting in place and the room is in service condition. Don't do a little sample on a board and give it to the architect or designer or homeowner in a field office type setting. Do it on site with the lighting. That way you can actually see if the color appears the way you want it to on site next to the tile being installed. Again, the last thing you want to do is do some high end tile install only to have them want you to rip it out after it's done. So take a little bit of extra time and effort up front. It'll also help bring the customer's expectations in line with reality. For more information on many other factors that may affect final grout or even grout maintenance, don't hesitate to go to our technical data sheet section of our website, which you can see here has hundreds of documents that Technical Services has produced. So again, no matter whether you see the dress as gold or blue, remember these resources. Keep these key points in the back of your mind if ever presented with them by a customer or an end user that's not happy with the final grout color. These are great resources to help keep their expectations in line with reality. Thank you very much and have a great rest of the day.